give the school that impression that you're nobody. You can study abroad irrespective of your age because there is no age limit on education. <laughs> Whoa! How are you doing today? Welcome to this particular live session. As you know, I'm here to answer questions, 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 questions. Okay. So I know people have questions and that is why I'm spending time answering these questions because somebody may have asked it. However, you yourself may be able to benefit from it. So listen, listen. All right. And if you have more questions, feel free, chat us inbox, okay? Chat us inbox. I will be able to respond to your question individually to you. So in case you see any of these questions, right? And uh, you feel like, well, uh, what if this chat us inbox will be able to respond to you? So uh, one question I have here right now is, somebody is asking, I am, a, I am a nurse midwife currently in ophthalmic nursing training. Can I apply for BSc Public Health? Yes. The answer is yes, right? Because this person has the health background already. By the way, uh, public health is what we call, is part of what we call interdisciplinary programs. What, uh, meaning that even people without health background can actually do public health. However, this person even have, ha has health background. So, for sure, they can do public health. The only catch is that advantage migration, we don't work with undergraduates. We don't work with people going for undergraduate studies, right? So this person will not be able to work with advantage migration. But yes, they'll be able to apply for admission abroad, get it and travel if they know exactly what they are doing. All right? Now, the next question I have here is, Dr. Linda, please throw more light in Canadian schools asking for 2-1 at least postgraduate requirement. Well, of course, when you go to uh, when you go to Canadian school website, you see a lot of things. Most of some of them, they are clear cuts, some are not. There are also strategies for handling this, right? Like you see a school asking for so so and so. How do you know? when to apply irrespective of your grade or when not to apply. This is part of our curriculum in Vantage Migration. So we teach you the type of program to apply for and the type of program not to apply for, irrespective of what is written on the website and irrespective of your grade. So, and we teach you what exactly the school is looking for. It's like, the school has written something on the website, but take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> Speaking from experience, so if you are, if you find yourself in these shoes, especially for people with two, two, and third class, attend a Vantage Migration free webinar at www.vantagemigration.ca to know how to get started. Every time here, we tell you, uh, we show you people who have third class, who have two, two, who have relocated to different countries, Canada inclusive. So. It's up to you if you really want to get trained or if you want to keep beating around the bush not knowing what to do, right? It depends. If you have, if you, let me tell you, let me give you an example. Let's say you stay at home, you don't work, right? Uh, you don't work, you, you wake up, you gallivant, you watch movie, you don't, you, you, you don't do anything. Use that time and enter Google and be searching. But if you're a busy working class person, in the morning you wake up, you go to work, you return evening. Do you really have 24 hours a day to be searching Google endlessly? No. You get trained to quicken your steps. Even if you're at home, you don't know how many things you're doing. You still have the option of choosing whether you want to use two years to do study abroad search, school search only, or you want to learn what to do in a couple of days and boom, you, you, you're already an expert. People, different people choose different things. depending on what your time is worth to you. For me, my time is worth a lot of money to me. So these days, I don't waste time doing things that other people can teach me exactly what to do. <laughs> so now somebody else has a question. says, I need to join my husband in the U.S., but there has been bottleneck issues not making this happen. Advice, please. Woo! <laughs> Girl needs to join her husband, you know? Oh, the weather is too cold. <laughs> she needs 
somebody to keep her warm. Okay, I'm just kidding. But that's true, you know. <laughs> okay, so she needs to join her husband. They are, they are bottlenecks. One of two things. She can relocate by herself to US through the study abroad route. And so when she comes with study, right, she and her husband can meet. Even some of these people telling you, especially for US, even some of the people telling you they've been bottlenecks. The real bottleneck is that the husband is married to another woman in US. Now, now, the woman may already know about this. But she doesn't. If she does not, she should prepare her mind for... <laughs> For her to her shape. If she already does, then that means she already knows what's going on. So relocate to US. You can even relocate relocate to US as yourself. Then you meet your husband in US, right? You may even be the one that you will now end up having the paper that your husband will use to uh, to normalize his stay. That is option one. Option two, relocate to another high income country. And your husband can come here to join you. For example, you're having a problem with US. You can relocate to UK. The woman can relocate via study abroad to UK or via study abroad to US. And the husband can come and join her there. Do you get what I mean? Because sometimes prior to this time, right, many people don't know that study abroad is a valid, efficient, fast, and sure relocation pathway. True of us. Many people don't know. So some people, some of those persons in the last five years, ten years, they've made mistakes that is difficult to, to, to change. However, now that you know, what can you do? The woman can relocate to U.S. or to any other country and the husband can join them there. All right? So study abroad can help you clean that mess. Okay, thank you so much. And how do you get started? Go to www.vantagemigration.ca. That's how to get started, okay, with our free webinar. Now, next question says, someone told me when you have a, re a student visa, you can only work on campus, not outside campus in U.S. How true is this? So, like, it, uh, when you hear this kind of uh, question, instead of you to quickly rush and say, boom, 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 it's true. Boom, 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 boom. It's not true. What do you do? You do more search. You, 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 you go to the study visa website for this, uh, for US and you read for yourself. You do, you go to YouTube, you look for, you type this kind of questions. You, you know, type this kind of question on YouTube. You see many videos. You watch, why don't you watch five videos or 10 videos on this topic? You'll be an expert on what this topic is saying. This is how I get some of the information in a field that I want to learn more about. So I'm not going to rush now to tell you it's true, it's not true. But instead, I want to use this opportunity to teach you how to fish for yourself. How do you get answers to questions like this? Not from them say, them say, by doing your own in-depth research. So I'm giving you that assignment. Go, go on YouTube, dig, 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 and see if you can find answers to this. If you find the answer, Comment it below this video. I want to know the answer that you found. And it's not just for the person that is asking this question. For every other person that is watching, go do that assignment. Type, oh, can, can students work off campus in U.S.? Can students work only on campus in U.S.? You know, type something like that on YouTube. Watch five videos. Summarize what the video is telling you. And come back to this, uh, to this video and comment it here. I will know if you did that assignment or not. Eh? Do the assignment, okay? Okay, good. Now, the next question says, someone, uh, hello, ma. For someone who just graduated and has plans to travel abroad through study, should the person wait to complete his NYSE or can the person start processing? Okay. So, NYSE usually say is one year program, right? You, I advise that you start your study abroad process before you start your NYSE or during the NYSE period, not after. Why? NYSE take one year. Study abroad preparation also takes one year. Get about. So overlap them. Even if you get admission and you are supposed to resume, but your NYSE is not over, there are other ways to do it, but I will leave you to figure that out. But one of the things you can also do is defer the admission, right? Defined, but it gives you it's like it's like giving you double life because 
you can get admission and defer or you make mistakes learn from it and the following year you apply right again so it is always better to start on time anytime you are given the opportunity should i start now or should i start later always choose to start now choose to start now i'm telling you uh, 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 choose to start now like for example one lady told me how she started her study abroad stuff when she was in NYC. A guy came to propose to her. She told the guy, oh, me, I want to travel abroad, though. Do, I have started my process. Do you want to travel or not? After the guy said he wants to travel, that was when she now said, yes, 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 for real. <laughs> you know, if you're a lady, you even want to kickstart your life before somebody else will just come and turn you to a different direction that you cannot even understand. Even if you're a man, same thing. It's better if your spouse is missing you on your journey to fulfilling your purpose or to fulfilling your dream. Then they will even know whether they fit into that dream or not. I know even as I'm saying this, some people with some queer mindset who say, I beg, may the husband call if I study abroad, I feel liver. My dear. <laughs> that one, I cannot help you. <laughs> okay, let's look at the next question. Somebody said, Hello, doctor. I am a graduate here in Kenya with bachelor's degree in commerce. I would love to pursue postgraduate diploma in Canada. Kindly advice. Okay. So, first of all, hey, I'm happy you say kindly advice. First of all, I'm going to say don't zero your mind that you want to pursue postgraduate diploma. What makes you think you want to pursue postgraduate diploma? Do you know that the same person who can apply for postgraduate diploma can also apply for masters, at least some kind of masters, right? So don't zero your mind that you want to apply for postgraduate diploma. You want to do your postgraduate studies abroad. That's fine. Number two advice is what? Start by attending our free webinar at www.vantagemigration.ca. You are going to be able to see the, um, like, you attend the webinar, you see all the step-by-step -step process. And yes, you'll be able to make your choice, know what to do to get started. Get started, get started, get started. Start from the free webinar, okay? But please, don't just zero your mind that, that uh, don't just zero your mind that, ah, I want to do PGD. Because it's not compulsory. It's not compulsory. Right? I'm not saying PGD is bad. I just feel like for this person, maybe, uh, this is what I suspect. Maybe this person have a low grade and they just feel like because they have a low grade, they must be going for PGD. So I worry that this person has that rigid mindset on PGD. That's why I'm saying that open your mind. Sometimes you will find out that, um, sometimes you find out that, yes, after everything, PGD was your best choice. Sometimes you find out that after everything, masters was your best choice. But Keep that flexibility. It's very important. All right. Now, let's see. The next person said, Doctor, is there full funding for MPH? MPH means Masters in Public Health. Now, let me tell you. Simple trick because this saved my dream when I was in your shoes. When I finished as a dentist, I wanted to relocate abroad. Right? And I was looking for like a Masters in Public Health. Actually, I wanted to study abroad. Let me be specific. I didn't know that you could relocate through study abroad like that, like that. You know, I wanted to study abroad. Now, because in my field, people do MPH. That's what they do. What is MPH? MPH is acronym for Masters in Public Health. But oftentimes, it's referring to the professional masters. Being a dentist, most of my senior colleagues did professional masters in public health. I did not know that most professional masters in public health, even if they are coming with scholarship, they'll come with partial scholarship. However, NSC in public health was always coming with full funding. It took me a year and six months to, to discover this. Oh no, a year plus, Sha, to discover this. This information I'm giving to you right now. A year plus. That's why I'm telling people that uh, if you think you have time, you want to waste your time. You want to spend two years doing school search. Good luck. I did that. <laughs> so I can't even blame you. I did that. But I did that because there was nobody to teach me. I did that because there was nobody to show me the way. So you now that have somebody that can show you the way in 15 days, in 30 days, 
you can already become a study abroad expert. Do you still want to go and do the thing I did in 19 crazy? It doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense. So, so uh, MSc public health can come with full scholarship. So, the, I advise this person, of course, to attend our free webinar www.vantagemigration.ca so that you will learn how these things work. You will hear more about my story, right? How I did it, how other people did it, and how you can do it, which is the most important thing to you, right? <laughs> okay, now we have another question. So somebody said, what about someone who studied in Cameroon with Anglo-Saxon system? Saxon system. First of all, what is Anglo-Saxon system? Please, I am putting my word out there to all Cameroonians following this page. Or if you're Cameroonian and you are watching this video, educate me more because I don't. It's like this is a system that this particular thing depends on Anglo Saxon system. I don't know what it is. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Well, one good thing is that you don't know something today, but somebody will teach you and you will know. So if you're Cameroonian, watching this video right now please drop a comment for me on what anglo-saxon system means i'm going i'm going to spell it for you a n g l o hyphen s a x o n system anglo-saxon system somebody's asking what about someone who studied in cameroon with anglo-saxon system maybe the person is saying can the person get admission abroad can the person get scholarship abroad for me not to give you the wrong answer and for me to continue to support Cameroonians, I need more information. Hello, Cameroonian Unga. Drop message from you, all right? <laughs> Drop comment for me. I want to know what the system means. That will help me. In, next time when I come to do um, live sessions, then I'm going to be able to respond to you appropriately, okay? Thank you. Now, next question says, uh, can I get a scholarship at age eight? Uh, let, let's leave it at can you get admission can you get scholarship yes you can it depends on what you do if you if you carry your knowledge right this i'm going to apply with the answer be yes the question is can you yes you can but you need to know what to do start by attending our free webinar at www.vantagemigration.ca okay all right and uh, you can chat us inbox if the, if, if the need arises Thank you. So let's see. Uh, one moment. One moment. So uh, say, what if your spouse is not a graduate? Can they relocate too? Yes. Your spouse who is not a graduate can relocate with you who is a graduate. Your spouse who is not a graduate can relocate with you. He is a graduate. All right. So Cameroonians, you can check what is anglo saxon system. One moment. Let me see if, if, if that spelling is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So, you, uh, uh, as I said, somebody said, if your spouse is not a graduate, can they relocate too? Yes. They can relocate. How? You, who is a graduate, will get admission. Then you will relocate with your family. You will relocate with your family. Whether your family, whether your spouse, the husband or wife, have admission, um, have BSc, have masters, have PhD, it doesn't really matter for you to. You can relocate with them. All right. So. <laughs> Thank you to all the Cameroonians that have educated me on what Anglo-Saxon system means. For someone who had the question on, what about someone who studied in Cameroon with Anglo-Saxon system, meaning that the person was taught in English? Yes, you can get admission abroad. Hello, you can get admission abroad. And most schools will give you waiver because you were taught in English. Because the criteria for being taught in English Sorry, the criteria for having an IETS or TOEFL or any other English exam waiver is that you should have studied in English for at least three years. So, if a, for a Cameroonian who was taught in Anglo-Saxon system, 
right meaning they were taught in english for their bsc right they studied maybe for three to four, four years with english so that means they qualify for the waiver yes and even if you don't qualify for iats waiver does not mean you cannot get scholarship or admission abroad you can if you know how to speak english the worst case scenario is that you write the english exam but if you studied in english then you qualify for a waiver even if you don't see the name of your country listed on the countries for waiver in that particular school write to the graduate coordinator tell them you studied in english provide proof from your school that you studied in english and they waive it for you all right <laughs> thank you cameroonians watching okay uh somebody said um is there special application for scholarship now there are different types of scholarship i want you to know that for some of those scholarships you have to apply differently but for a lot and most of the scholarships you have like your application for admission is equal to your application for scholarship meaning most times there is no separate application but the, the two systems operate some schools you do separate application for some schools you don't even need to do separate application especially for the admissions coming with full scholarship most times you don't even need to do separate application for the scholarship all right now the next question says um, what of somebody wish someone wishing to study abroad but has an advanced level certificate is this possible Yes, it is possible. Maybe the person can apply for a postgraduate diploma or a BSc, as the case may be. However, as Vantage Migration, we work with graduates, people with minimum of bachelor's or higher national diploma. These persons can go on to apply for master's or postgraduate diploma, right? Of course, we also work with people with master's or people going for PhD. That's totally fine. I'm just saying that we work with people minimum university level education either hnd or bachelor's minimum all right the next question says um i am interested in early childhood education but already have a phd in geography any advice the lord be with you that's my advice <laughs> somebody said can i study uh, study, uh, study work without IETS in the US. That study and work without IETS in the US. Yes, you can. If you study in English and you're going to UK to study, you can get I you're, you're qualified for IETS waiver. All right, you're qualified for the waiver. So, yes, you can study without writing IETS. Schools can tell you, yes, get you, uh, get get uh, their IETS score. If you're a Vantage Migration student, we show you exactly what to do when a school asks you for IETS results. We show you exactly what to do. There are about three to four things that you can do. Not that you will do the four things, so you do this one, if this one does not, or you do this one, if this one does not, or you do this one. Before you finish the, the four of them, my dear, if, now the school, the school will write your admission letter, moving from conditional admission to unconditional admission. Which simply means you get giving you the full admission without asking you for an IETS exam. Someone said, please do all schools in Canada request for application fee? A, most of the schools request for application fee, like 95%. So we could say yes, schools request for application fee. However, there have been people who have been able to negotiate their IETA, uh, sorry, negotiate their um, application fee where the school waived it for them. But uh, because I, I always teach students to pr present themselves as an expatriate, only do application fee waiver request when it is impossible for you to apply without getting application fee waiver. Because it may end up affecting the psychology of the person that wants to uh, select uh, select people for admission. If you have the money, even if you miss, you will suffer to get it. Suffer and get it, apply to that scholarship school, but also pay the application fee. It puts you in a position of strength. 
Yes, you can get application fee waiver when you negotiate. I do not advise you to go and be negotiating with the school for application fee waiver, except it is impossible for you to do that application if they don't waive the fee. Impossible is the word. Not except it will be hard for you. It, everything is hard. Even to eat, they hard. Even to buy water is hard. If it is impossible, mm -hmm, then go ahead and negotiate. If you can, avoid it. Because you are working with human beings that have psychology. It's like, think of it, it's like somebody is coming to your house, even transport they don't have. Okay, let's ask people. I always love to use scenario. Imagine somebody is coming to your house to stay. Let's say somebody, a friend called you now and, say, and said, oh, he doesn't have accommodation. He would like to come and stay in your place. You now say yes. You now tell, that same friend goes on to tell you that he or, she, he or she does not even have money, transport money to come to your house where you are going to host them for free. What comes to your mind? Request to join my live session so that I can uh, we can talk more about this. Solomon to add because sometimes people don't know how these things affect others. They, ju they just go and do things, right? I'll, let's hear from others in case I'm the one thinking about it this way. Someone said, uh, let's see what the person said. Florence, uh, it doesn't really sound nice to say that they don't have transportation. It's like you're coming to, to be all dependent on me. I wouldn't like it at all, right? A lot of people wouldn't like that. So don't give the school that impression that you're nobody. Somebody said, um, I was 40 years old, something like that, and I cannot go to Canada for my PhD program. You can study abroad irrespective of your age because there is no age limit on education. Whether you are 40, 41, 42, 43, somebody else is still going to ask me, what about 39? Just because I don't mention it. Age does not matter. Age does not matter. Who stop? Now, somebody was saying something. I saw something else that looked like that. Somebody said, I left school 17 years ago. Can I still get admission in the same field I did my first degree? It depends. So, I left school 17 years ago. It's not your problem. Your problem is how are you going to, what is on your CV? How are you going to arrange this? How are you going to show this? That is what we teach you, Advantage Migration dot ca www advantage migration sorry www dot vantage migration dot ca right learn so because we've had people with so many age gaps uh sorry study gap and be able to scale through your study gap is not the problem the problem is do you know how to turn your study gap from a bad thing to a good thing that your study gap that you think is a problem is also a gold mine. <laughs> it's also a gold mine. Do you know how to do you know how to turn it from looking negative to looking positive? That's what you should learn. So study gap is not the problem. But if you don't do anything about it, it will hinder you. If you do something about it, it becomes a blessing. You you become preferred over people without uh, uh, study gap. Okay. Neka, you don't have a problem, oh. Somebody said, is it possible for HND holders with lower credit to get admission for masters and all the PGD? Yes, it's possible. We already so uh, I already keep saying that your grade is not a problem. What matters is if you know the program to apply for, where to apply for it, what country to focus on. Those are the things you need. All right. Go to www.vantagemigration.ca. <laughs> okay? Someone is saying, um, I have uh, Mohammed talking about business education. I want to do masters in early childhood education or educational technology in Canada. Please as well. It's possible, but you have to know that's not the only program you can do. At every point in time, there are, there are at least more than 10 programs you can do, right? That's not the only program you can do. So, is, is a good thing to add that to your program list, but that's not the only program you can do. Mohammed, get trained. <laughs> Go to www.advantagemigration.ca, okay? To watch our free webinar and start from there. I've come to the end of today's question and answer. I hope, I hope, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. 
take good care of yourself. Feel, I see you again, again, again. <laughs> As you know, my name is Dr. Linda Iheme. I'm an educational consultant with Vantage Migration. Myself and my team, we train graduates who want to relocate abroad on exactly what to do to be able to secure admission, scholarship, study loan, and every other thing they need to successfully relocate abroad. Whoa, so if you want to study abroad, go over to our free study abroad webinar at www.vantagemigration.ca. All right? And for sure, you're not going to miss out. All right? Take good care of yourself. Bye. <laughs>